This video shows how to make your process flowcharts simple and clear. Certain users may eventually get to the point when their model logic looks like this, or this, or this. If your flowchart resembles one of these cases, you can simplify the flowchart by creating a custom block that will comprise the reusable piece of logic. We'll consider a wholesale warehouse example model, which you can find in the supply chains and logistics section of the AnyLogic examples. To instantly find the flowchart, expand the main node in the projects tree and double click a block under Agents. As you can see, the flowchart includes two similar sequences of blocks representing the pallet's loading logic. The seize block accepts pallets and seizes a forklift truck operated by a loading person. The move to simulates how the forklift truck transfers the pallet to the loading zone. The delay block simulates pallet loading by delaying the process for the specified amount of time. And the release block releases the forklift truck, allowing the pallet to exit the block. Let's create a reusable block that will comprise these four blocks. Select the blocks. Right-click the selection and select Create Flowchart Block from the context menu. The New Agent Wizard opens. Name the agent type Load Pallets and click OK. The flowchart block of the new type will substitute the four blocks in the flowchart. Double-click the Load Pallets block to open its diagram and explore its internals. We can configure the custom block by modifying the properties of the included blocks. The essential properties are exposed on the interface of the custom block via parameters. As you can see, each parameter name contains the name of the flowchart block and the block's property it's linked to. Select the Seize Loader 1 block. You'll see that the Resource Pool property of the block is linked to the Seize Loader underscore Resource Pool parameter. This parameter provides the resource units to be seized by the Seize block. Select this parameter and change its label to a simpler one. Seize Resource. Further on, you'll see how these changes affect the names of the custom block's parameters. The parameter move to loading zone 1 underscore destination node is linked to the node value of the move to block, which defines the movement destination. Change the parameter's label to loading zone. This parameter is used to vary the delay block's delay time. Set its label to loading time. The last parameter provides the release block with a list of previously seized resource pools to be released. Set this parameter's label to Released Resources. And now let's change the default icon of this custom block, which currently is represented by the blue rectangle. You can create an icon with the help of the elements of the presentation palette, shapes, texts, or images. We will replace the default rectangle with the image element. Delete the icon. Drag the image element to the graphical diagram and place it in the icon area. Make sure that both input and output ports are exactly on the image's border. Navigate to the image's properties and select the icon checkbox. In the on-click action of the advanced section, type return true semicolon to be able to navigate inside the block during simulation. Let's add two text elements to display the number of agents that have passed through the ports of our block. Drag the text elements from the presentation palette and position them near the ports. In the properties of the first text element, type a stub value in the text field, switch the field to dynamic value, and provide the seizeloader1.in.count expression, which will count the agents passing through the input port of the seize block. In the appearance section, set alignment to the right to prevent the text from overlapping the icon. In the same way, for the second text element, type release loading transfer person one.out.count to count the agents passing through the outgoing port of the release block. Select both text elements, check the icon property to make them part of the block's icon, and finally set color to blue. We finished tuning our custom block. Switch to the main agent diagram and select the load pallets block. You'll see that its parameters bear the names of the labels which we've previously modified. Observe the block's parameter values.
the loading time is set to uniform, loading time min, loading time max, to get a random value from within the boundaries defined by the corresponding parameters of the main agent. The loading zone parameters refers to the loading zone one rect node. Both seized resource and released resource parameters are set to loader. Let's substitute the other four blocks in the upper flow chart branch with a copy of our load pallets block. First, we'll look at the parameters of these four blocks. The same resource pool, loader, is used in the seize and the release blocks. The delay block has the same time duration set for the loading operation. The move to block is set up in the same way except for the node parameter, which refers to the loading zone two rect node. We'll use this value in the new copy of our custom block. Okay, we're ready to go on. Delete the four blocks and control drag our custom block instead of them. The obtained copy of the block will have the same parameter values as the original instance. We need to adjust only one of them. In the properties of the just created block, set loading zone to loading zone two rect. That's it. Run the model. and switch to the logic section. Double-click the custom block to get inside and observe its operation. If you can't wait to try creating a custom block yourself, take a look at the upper part of the flowchart. There's another pair of repeating sequences, which simulates the process of unloading trucks. Thanks for watching. Simplify your flowcharts and come back for more AnyLogic how-to videos.